For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. We're only going to read till there. Lord God, we pray to you, Lord, thanking you, first and foremost, because one more day we have had victory when we are here in your presence. Lord, we are here tonight glorifying your name because you are the only one that is worthy of all our praise. Now we ask, God, that your word can speak to our hearts and to each and every one that is here tonight, bringing blessings, Lord, that you know that each one of us need. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's all be seated. Um, this is a little bit of a different text. It ends a little differently. But to be honest, uh, brothers, during this whole week, there is a direction for each of the messages during each day that we have service. So there is orientations and suggestions. And this text talks about starts with a question right and this question where is the promise of his coming this is a question that I think that each every person that believes in God maybe asks this question you know at one point of their walk with Christ they ask this question where where is this promise of his coming you know if we're going by human reasoning and human understanding the question is valid it's valid humanly speaking and we can even see as the text continues it says as the verse goes on it says for since the fathers fell asleep so our patriarchs ever since they have died the world has continued in this same way so where is this promise that you wait that we wait for and this is the question that they ask and I go for a step further. I think that the world not only stays the same as it was in the beginning of creation, I think it actually has gotten worse. You know, all of this time that has gone by, as much as we have today, the practicality, the technology of a lot of new things, the world today is a lot worse than the way it used to be, I would go as far as to say. But this question is... This question speaks a lot about what our hope is, right? Our hope is the coming of the Lord Jesus. It's that in which we most desire in this life. And when I remember when I was talking about the person who believes in God, the Christian, when a Christian asks this question, they can get a little bit confused. There might be some doubts in their mind because there isn't necessarily an answer to this question to the Christian. But the servant of the Lord, there's no confusion. Because if you are here tonight, you are here because you have made a commitment with God. You didn't come here simply just because there has been said that we're going to have service every day. You didn't come out of an obligation. No, you came as a commitment. You are joyful to be here. You are glad to come to the house of the Lord. And the joy that we felt yesterday, we want to feel that every day, right? Glory to God. Because even though we had a hard, long day, even though we have significantly less people today than we had yesterday, the presence of the Lord is the same today. And it's the same yesterday, and it's the same always. And if you ask this question to a Christian, they're not going to have an answer. But if you ask this question to a true servant of God, the answer is going to be that we have to live by faith. We have to live by faith because God is pleased in those who who walk by faith and persevere. And while I was here yesterday, I'm going to make a confession to you guys as the songs were going on. Each song each, each song that played, I, I like... I um, watched the instrumentalist, and as I was sitting at the front, I was a little jealous that I wasn't playing myself. And as I went home, what was interesting was even though I didn't play this song, I, I was singing the song that is being played right now. This happiness is not going to leave my heart. We can even sing it right now. 
we're going to glorify the name of the Lord with this song because this happiness, this joy is not going to leave our hearts. Aleluya. The song talks about how um, the servant of the Lord knows where he is going. And this is our answer as the servant of the Lord. It's a simple answer. While the world is trying to make arguments and debate and refute, their argument is going to stay the same. And I'm going to tell you, the world is not going to be the same because when Jesus comes into our lives our world changes so our argument our counter argument to these people that are trying to debate with us where is this where is this promise that God is coming we're going to answer to them my world has changed because God lives in me you know in the text it's saying that the world hasn't changed at all it's the same as it was in the beginning but my world has changed because I have found God and in the text in the Bible, it says um, a text that says, how can we not speak of the things in which we have seen and lived? And this moment that we are living, we have to keep this in our hearts. How can we keep from singing and singing and preaching about the things that we are living every day? Sometimes we can be in having a problem, a situation in our lives in which the human resources, there is no more. It's It's gone. But I can look around me and I can see my family has health. I still have a roof over my head. I have a job. I see that God has sustained me and my family. I see that God has sustained all of the brethren in the church, all the brothers and sisters. And we are here because God has sustained us and God is faithful with us. This is our argument. We, we cannot. We cannot keep from saying about the things that we have heard from the Holy Spirit and the things that God has done for us. The world, the world, it's true, has stayed the same or it's gotten worse, but our world hasn't. Our world has changed. We are tired of hearing about wars and rumors of wars, but our lives is a walk to eternity. And we're going to end this service glorifying the name of the Lord, knowing that our argument is this. My world has changed personally because I am a servant of God and God lives within me. We're going to glorify the name of the Lord with one more song.
we glorify you. Lord, blessed be your holy name because soon Maranatha is going to happen. And we glorify you because we have the certainty that while we are here in this world, you are going to always be by our side, sustaining us. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to invite everyone to be standing once more. Blessed be your holy name, God, for your care, for your love, for this opportunity that we have. Lord, to be in your house, this open door that gives us the opportunity to praise your name. We glorify you because nothing has lacked in your people, for your people. Now we ask that you may accept this service. God, continue with us. Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My church, your God speaks to you now to affirm you the, the word of my, my son. Today was not less than yesterday because the song and praise that has reached my throne also has reached my throne today. From your lips, the perfect song has been sung. Each one of your hearts has been fed with my word. The hearts of each one of you leaves today with joy of my Holy Spirit. My church, praise your God. And to you, my my children, I tell you that your portion is ready for me in my ready for you in my eternity. I pour out my blessing over each and every one of you. Glorify my name, church. Sing praises to the Holy One of Israel. Lord, confirm your good words so that tomorrow we can also experience one more time this little sliver of heaven. Lord, we pray to you thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. Now everyone may be seated once more. I, If anyone would like prayer, any assistance, we are here to pray for you, ready to assist anyone. To all, the peace of the Lord. Amen, brethren. Peace of the Lord. I'd like to tell you what God has also just said. Tomorrow is a special service for the ladies, but the whole church is welcome. Um, there's going to be a special message for all of us. More than welcome to be here. Um, remembering, we're going to remind everyone of the, the feast. We are in feast. We are in party mode, right? Because God has already spoken. He has a portion reserved for all of our ladies and all of our sisters. And we're going to be here to also receive this blessing with them because we are in feast. We are in a period of feasting and celebration. We are in celebration. Um, reminding everyone about the invitations. If you don't have the physical invitation, you can send them a link. You can send them a picture. Um, the digital invitation. Um, we also have service. Aside from tomorrow, we have a service on Friday at 8 o'clock. On Saturday, we're going to have a, another evangelization at 4.30 um, next to the restaurant Picanha Brazil. And then that night, Saturday night at 7.30, we're going to have another service. And Sunday morning is the celebration of celebrations. It's going to be trumpets and feasts, the celebration that we've all been waiting for on Sunday at 9 a.m. To all, a peace of the Lord, the peace of the Lord.